Prepare yourself for a sprawling discussion on just about anything, where critical thinking meets pop culture in a collision of mind-bending proportions. Please secure all neurons and prepare for full frontal cortex. It's time for Incoherent Ramblings. Dun 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 This episode of Apocalypse is now. I see what you did there. Yeah, I see what you did there. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of Incoherent Ramblings. This is Ramble Zero R three. What is it? Thirty three. Thirty three. R. Oh, we don't do the R. Zero three three, and it's going to be of on six six. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. And it's going to be on how to survive and the it's apocalypse. Twice Fifteen and a half. Now we're doing it a little different this time. So <laughs> wait. No. Hey, shut up. Shut up. Oh, shut up. Oh, I'm your host Joey Shamble. We also have Paul Hottinger, Kale Anderson, Daryl Jars, and, uh, and we're not afraid of clowns. Oh no, that's, that's no, 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 no. We're not afraid of clowns. Uh, we, we, and we have to worry about if you want to reach us, our email is show at iamrambling dot com. Please send us an email. Today, our sponsor for this wonderful apocalypse Long is ball. Fallout Boy! No, 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 that's a band. It's, oh. it's Vault Boy. Yeah. Vault, Vault Boy! Oh, they called it Fallout Boy. <laughs> right. Sorry, Fallout Boy. <laughs> that's okay. Well, I, 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 oh, <laughs> see, there we go. It's been voted on. There's now. the Fallout. Okay, we're doing it a little bit. Di- we're doing it a little bit different. This we're trying a new format this week. Not it's not random sports. ramblings, but we do have the belt. Every. Uh, at first, it's going to be three minutes, and then every five minutes, the bell's going to go off. We are slaves to the bell yeah, this more time. More cowbell. More when the cowbell. bell goes off, we have to move on. So this is the introduction. We, once the bell goes off, we have to move on to our uh, pre-ramble. Absolutely. So uh, just try to try to uh, stick with us through the bells today and see if you, we can hang on. <laughs> Oh, hell's bells. <laughs> oh, hell's bells. Bong. Bong. Dong, Bong. Dong. So th- it's going to be three minutes for this, three minutes for the pre-ramble, three minutes, minutes for the introduction to the topic, then five minutes for each topic of different apocalypses and how we can survive them, one minute to close, and then we're out of here no matter what. Gee, all right. right. That, <laughs> no, <laughs> that, we are slaves to the bell. If you don't you follow the bell. slavery. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Wait, Wait who's the boss? The bell. The, the bell. bell. The bell. Not saved saved by the bell. It's not Tony. Yeah. It's not Angela. Not tacos. No. Nope. Who's the boss? So we we need to completely follow it. It doesn't matter yeah. if we want to keep talking. We have to intro what we're doing because we're out of time almost. I already did. What? We're doing an apocalypse. Oh, but I'll yeah. do that. That's coming okay. up now. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, should I, should so I explain pre-ramble. what ramble? Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. yeah. Vault, Boy. Okay, Vault Boy is a mascot from the Fallout series of games, and the game has a lot of Americana kind of things that are like. Kind of uh, retro, yeah, retro uh, futurism where everything had vacuum tubes and stuff like that. So this guy is featured in the manual and a lot of the game on screen guides where he looks kind of like an old school. Did drawing. you turn the bell down? No, there's no bell. It's coming. No, I know it's coming, but did you turn it down because it was oh, really turn, loud it's before? Down oh, okay, thank God. Maybe. <laughs> well, we'll see. Yeah. In a few. Wait, you, and you shouldn't be able to look okay, at the bell okay, from okay, now on. Look at it. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Okay, it wasn't turned down enough. The pre ramble today is going to be uh, Daryl and Kale. That was earlier. Yeah. (laughs) Daryl and Kale went to go see Richard Dawkins where? At Caltech. Not Richard Dawson. (laughs) Yeah, not Dawson. Yeah. (laughs) So here is their on the spot live reporting. After we saw his. Last but not least, three, two. Hi, here we are reporting from the campus of Caltech for Incoherent Ramblings, and behind us is the Benton Auditorium, where we just saw Richard Dawkins in a conversation with Michael Shermer, and they started out with the topic of his new book, A Life of Wonder. A Life of Wonder, uh, it's about the first half of his life up until the point where he uh, became like Right. Okay. So neither of us have actually read the book, but it was interesting to get a little insight about that. But then he soon diverted the conversation into topics of evolution, genetics. All over the place, and all stuff he likes to talk about are interesting. Philosophy, science, uh, a bit of anti-religion. It was just a really interesting, thought-provoking conversation. I agree. The one part that I really like during the uh, question and answer point, I love that point, especially since I didn't get to 
<laughs> yeah. Wait, tell, wait. tell what your question was, Daryl. Well, my ahead. question was, uh, what would be your elevator pitch? It was three too late. Right, right, right. They, they canceled the line because they ran out of time and I had to go back to my seat. But I was going to ask um, Richard Dawkins, because he mentioned earlier about a couple things. Agency as a tendency of, of human beings when something rustles in the bushes is that a leopard Carol's we're kind of involved in the worst <laughs> so that we can survive better. Um, how that relates to the term selfish gene, because he also mentioned that he could have the book, mortal gene. And my question was, what would be your elevator pitch to um, tell somebody that the gene itself doesn't have agency? You need to convince someone that, you no, know, it's not the gene itself being selfish, but it's propagation acts selfishly to create an altruistic individual. Right. But maybe that would have been his answer. <laughs> maybe. That probably would have been close so, to it. But what I was talking about is that I heard that uh, Stephen Colbert uh, watched that little video where he talks about uh, his molestation as a child. Right. And the point is, is that I really like how here he got into it and really explained himself well. That he, and it showed that he was not trivializing what happened to him. He was trying to show how it was nothing compared to what other people have experienced, which is the whole point. Yeah, really in, his, like in his answer, he uh, did kind of trivialize it. And it oh, oh, that's oh, too bad. Oh, no. Just when we were getting, so you know, I need to talk more about molestation. Just when we were yeah, getting to no the good pedophilia part. Yeah. All right. So moving on to. Anybody want to touch me? You can turns probably out, turn that turns off. Turns out he was talking about mollusks, not mollusks. <laughs> <laughs> so. I like it when mollusks touch me. He's like Squidward did that. <laughs> no, we shouldn't make light of it, though. We shouldn't. No, we shouldn't. Oh, but we can't talk about it. We're on the uh, next part. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. So, Apocalypse Now. Right. We're talking about surviving the apocalypse. We're going to go through uh, 8, 9, 10 different apocalypse ideas, and we're going to quickly introduce them, and then we're going to talk about how to survive them. That's the main idea. So we're, gonna, we're not going to be saying like how these apocaly, apocaly, apocalypses, apocalypses. Yeah, how they could happen. We're going to talk instead about how we would go about surviving each individual apocalypse. Has it occurred to you that there's going to be a lot of crossover? Because an apocalypse is an apocalypse is an apocalypse. Yeah, right? you got a point there. So, so if right. we end up having crossover, yeah, and we cross over, and we got too much, then I don't like crossing. Then we'll, we can talk more about the specific Never apocalypse the okay. itself. Because right. that that might be. Well, more we'll probably roll in a little general apocalypse in each one. Can we roll in a little generally? <laughs> <laughs> okay, banjo guys. <laughs> that was, is it banjo? banjo? Yeah. No, it's his horn. That's though. the horn. Okay. Oh no, the horn. Oh, but the original is banjo. Yeah, okay. Duke boy, man, they, guys, they touch each other and they're gay. Just the good old boys. That's that was not appropriate. Squeaky. I'm sorry. But we do have explicit on our iTunes setting, so we're we're fine now. And that's the reason why. So Kate. remember, I, the idea I, here is I, is I serious like because we're we're in the apocalypse now. Like them. <laughs> hey, whatever keeps you. Hey, in the hey, way. hey! Somebody, <laughs> if there was an apocalypse, you'd just be happy to have a Duke boy to touch you. Dude, I I would just <laughs> spoon with you guys in any fucking bag. <laughs> Just as hey, warm. When we go camping, you don't need an apocalypse for that. <laughs> oh, ho, ho. You told me it was an apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> that was from our, no, that was from our my fudge packing no. trip. Speaking right. of molestation. <laughs> uh, no. Oh, you, you went there, did you? Well, we always go there. So, uh... <laughs> 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 Shut up, dude. We don't have a Hitler apocalypse. Oh, we actually kind of do. Yeah. D dictator. Evil dictator. <laughs> yeah. By the way... We're uh, becoming more like 30 Rock where we have to mention Hitler or Germany or yeah, something. Yeah, somewhere every, in it. Every episode, you know? <laughs> what does yeah. that make us? Idiots. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of what I thought. Uh, so... Maybe three minutes is too long for introductions from now on. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, where's the bell? Now we can stall. Well, an apocalypse, it starts with the letter A. <laughs> it does start with the letter A. And we already and used, we used Fallout Boy. I mean, Vault, vault Boy. Vault Boy. Boy. Oh, oh man, we're we're gonna go on. Oh, Space Apocalypse. Out. Asteroids hitting the Earth, comets hitting the Earth are flying over us and making us turn into something unless we're behind lead. I'm sorry, Sonic that's an Armageddon. Yeah. Sun expansion. And it is easy to... Uh, Cosmic ray burst, gamma, antimatter, supernova, end of the universe, big rip, crib crunch, big bounce, big freeze, you name it. 
Let's go. How are we gonna survive it? Uh, big crunch. I think we're screwed. What's a big? Yeah, yeah that's pretty much. <laughs> I, we don't see it coming. It's like the universe is, is going to be gone. Uh, what do we do? Yeah, yeah. You see, uh, some of these travel faster than the speed of light, yeah, so, so then you like, don't, you, you know, detect them coming. So you're just like instantly gone. Like, yeah, just, a is that how burst, Sopranos ended? If a gamma ray burst gets directed right at us, we're toast. Yeah, well, yeah. so long as yeah, but if we survive, or we'd become, become fantastic. That's right. We'd become, we'd become whole. <laughs> or, or incredible. Incredible, yeah. Incredible. Right. So, so okay, wait, wait, wait. So if or we knew it was coming, and we knew it was about to happen, this is one of those ones where we could have preparation, because a lot of times we know this right. ahead of times. So we're looking at the type of uh, comet and hitting... we base. will call it preparation, eh? <laughs> Mm. <laughs> study no for more. avoiding the hemorrhoids about to hit the earth. <laughs> so basically, I, the idea is the surface of the earth will probably be unlivable because there will be giant clouds of gas. But we're talking about surviving an apocalypse, so we would have to say that there would be some chance of living. Well, and that's what I'm saying is that maybe what would have to happen is you'd have to go underground and make mushrooms or something like that. Well, we know yeah, that we walks. know for a fact that it wouldn't wipe out a life. Uh, completely off the Earth because we've had asteroid hit the Earth but before. Maybe, okay, so let's assume so it's we, one that will not completely wipe out a life on Earth. How do we not get wiped out? So this is going to be a key to all apocalypses we talk about is just surviving the initial ordeal. And that's one of those things because we yeah. are, like, we tell the story of our own lives in our heads. We're the, we have this narrative going on. We always kind of assume that if this big thing happened and like 99.9% .9 of everyone dies... Well, we're going to live. Oh, well, yeah. Because yeah. we're the heroes, right? And we're the 80%, we're remember? Well, fair, First if, if a comet or asteroid is coming, if they know what part of the planet's going to hit, I just go to the other side. Yeah, but then you might, if it's a hard enough impact, it'll actually like, throw you in the air. It'll cause them. <laughs> <it'll, laughs> <Whoa! laughs> but you got a better chance than getting crushed. No, but that's true. But that's what everyone's yeah. going to do, and that's something we need and to talk about. And then you get stuck in traffic. And yeah, I know. So one, of my, one of my plans, you're in World War Z, if you're trying to get somewhere and an apocalypse is coming, is you go the other way on the freeway. Yeah, but on the shoulder. It's always open. Because yeah, because it's gonna be open, and then people will think about that. You've got to be one of the first to do it, though. Get on the shoulder yeah, and you drive the opposite Why do they do that? Way. Like in World War, was it World War Z? Hmm. They did that. It was like half the freeway. Yeah, uh, and was Walking Dead. Oh, and, walking Dead. And in Independence yeah. Day, it was the same Independence thing. Independence Day. Yeah. It's, it's like there's a whole other freeway there. Just go on the other side, and it's, it's a little dangerous, but you know. Yeah. But if you're gonna survive afterwards, I think underground's gonna be one of your best bets because you need to the fallout or whatever it's going to be, you've got to get away from it. and mm, Definitely. So you're going to need to have some protection. And then the whole idea about if the sky is blotted out, then there's no energy from the sun and nothing can grow, and then you have right. a food problem. Well, the, I believe the idea, I, I think mammals survived mainly because they were so small and they mainly lived underground, not like deep underground after the you know dinosaurs thing, and they well, were able to get it, small bits of food. Yeah, they had, to, they had to survive for like, I don't know, three to five years before the uh, the natural process brought the debris back down to earth was that so short, huh? yeah oh, okay and it, it was it wasn't that long because I otherwise if decades. it had been longer than that yeah it would have killed all plant life That'd be an and interesting then nothing check for the show notes to see if yeah. how long it was what about living underwater See, that's an idea, too, because there's a lot of... <laughs> Geo <laughs> Aquaman! <laughs> geothermic would be probably your best Aquaman power source. Got screwed. You'd want to be Seriously. underground, like near a geothermic uh, source of power, either near underwater or underground, because then it's going to allow you to grow food or have to get the power you need. Of course, you need to have that set up beforehand, probably. Dear editor yes, of the would. comic book, you know, my good friend received a green ring and special powers <laughs> oh, from aliens. Aquaman. And, you know, this other guy fell to the earth when he was a baby and, you know, can fly and crunch bullets in his mouth and stuff like that. But what me? the hell did I get? I can command fish. <laughs> Signed <laughs> Aquaman. Yeah, I saw this awesome uh, poster where it showed Aquaman on the side of, uh, on the side of the, this uh, beach. And you see all these aliens and robots attacking and these huge great white sharks are like... Munching them and crushing them, and he's going to say, now who's the bitch now? <laughs> hey, he, he's the one. He's the one who's who caused Sharknado to happen. Yeah, that's that right. <laughs> that, it's him. He's just so pissed off being such a crappy superhero. Right. And you know, uh, there's a Family Guy thing where he's just like. <laughs> I love how he derailed that one. Yeah, nice <laughs> job, Daryl. Religious apocalypse, worldwide flood, second coming of Christ, burning of the earth, Armageddon, end of the world, Ragnarok. Or Spocalypse. 
You name it, it's religion. Best thing you can do is believe beforehand. <laughs> but of course, you know. so even if you do die, you still well. It, it, I guess it depends on which oh. apocalypse you're looking at. I mean, if you're looking at the Christian religion. apocalypse, uh, the rapture and everything, just you know, believe and then you're up into heaven and you're all good. Or mm -hmm. you're down here and it's gonna suck ass. Well, it's just uh, Earth is going to burn completely, according to them. If there's oh, a worldwide flood, Dallas Rain's going to shit his pants because <laughs> Doppler 7000 is going to go f***ing <laughs> crazy off the <laughs> charts. <laughs> All right, time for the <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, Oops, well, sorry. Doppler 7000. No, yeah. <laughs> what was that thing you did yeah, last cool. night? <laughs> Dallas Rain's went, yeah. like that when if he's doing a commercial for it. What? Really? It was weird. Yeah. It was like... He is... <laughs> <laughs> Hold nice, it. Nice job derailing. Thank okay. you. <laughs> so, so, okay. Okay, wait. Because Jesus is going to be there in a big throne, and everyone's going to be floating up in the sky, and if you're not, you'll be like, oh, damn. He's going to be like Q, you know, floating along in the <laughs> throne. <laughs> uh, just, well, I think, too, not just the... Uh, what is the final Trump I call him? The physical far point. The, Yeah. <laughs> the physical, uh, like the floods and... and and what's happening is, uh, I think you got to worry about the people. The people, yeah. the fanatic people that are just going to go crazy over this, thinking it's the second coming of the. Well, see, that's the thing about Oh, yeah, that's a good point. That's a very good point. Yeah. Even if we got to survive people with are going to assume. You're saying, because yeah. all of us are pretty skeptical about religion here, so we don't really think Sorry. this is going to happen. <laughs> so the idea is, what Paul's saying is there's going to be a regular apocalypse, you know, everyday apocalypse, and people are going to be like, oh, it's a religious apocalypse, and they're going to be all crazy and, like, sacrificing people or something like that. And in yeah. a minor degree, yeah. that was illustrated in Contact when... Oh, that's right. You know, when, aliens, and then like the religious. Yeah, that's so right. Some of them get a little. So bit, that's a, that's a good. That's a very interesting um, side angle to this. Yeah. Is that there? Even though we don't think any religious apocalypse is going to happen, there could be religious elements coming into any apocalypse. That does if happen. there's going to be one, I definitely want it to be Ragnarok because what that's going to be a yeah. kick-ass bomb. Big battle, uh -huh. and then a giant wolf is going to swallow. I thought you said it was going to be a rave. <clears throat> is it a lone? It's a rave. Yeah. Ragnarok. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what if the what if the wolf you know doesn't know how and he doesn't want to swallow and he spits? <laughs> Sucks for us. No, that would be better. Oh, yeah. No, it blows for us. <laughs> how big is this wolf? What? How big is this wolf? Well, big enough to swallow the earth. So. Well, he's yeah. supposed to, but then he's there's a, one of the Norse gods going to fight him. Wait, no, it's this like is a Loki story. What Norse is this? Like yeah, this Thor? is so Thor Loki's and coming? Loki and uh, all those. Yeah. yeah, and Odin. I, I, if if there is was Natalie like Portman the second coming or hmm? Natalie Portman got to be there. Oh God, I hope. You know what? I heard on on a, on History Channel <laughs> or one of those that apparently the whole uh, rapture was actually created in like the 17th century by some Catholic uh, bishops or something like that. It actually doesn't go back to Christ at all. It's something that was more well, recently created. A lot of things were created at the Council of Nicaea, which was like 1100. Maybe that was when it was. You know, and that's when they actually decided what was the Bible. Ah, okay. So yeah, more than likely like that might... Dead Sea Scrolls out, but they weren't... Wait, yeah. were they discovered at that time? And also... Um, they weren't around though. No no no, 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 no. But they would have been kept out also. Yeah. But th there was a lot of uh, other Gospels that didn't... And I think there was uh, also female Gospels, like Mary Magdalene's Gospel. And, right. the, and there was actually even Which, Judas' um, Gospel. And they didn't want his stuff. And They, they had either. to look at stuff that's good, that controls going to work for control. So obviously, yeah. I mean, the idea of rapture, you better believe yeah. or you're not going to be... You know, you're going to be down here with all the... Well, yeah. And also after they did their crap, then King James went through and decided what he didn't want in there. LeBron? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he probably would have been a better choice. Yeah. You know, but King James actually then decided what he wanted in the Bible, and he took out all the Catholic stuff. Um, so, Well, a few of the Mary Magdalene things were revived a little with the, the Da Vinci Code. It's yeah. like part of the idea there about, like, oh, that part was actually accurate. A well, little well, minor I, spoiler there. Well, I liked uh, a part of the Gospel of, I think it was Thomas, and where he actually s says that Jesus was married and had kids, kind of blew people away. I think, and I love his English muffins. <laughs> yeah. You're gay. All the nooks and crannies. <laughs> You're gay, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only 25%. Okay. All those crooks Ooh. and nannies. So, uh, you know, you lose your clothes. <laughs> 
<laughs> when well, that's a good song. Well, that's all right. Oh okay, God. Alien Apocalypse, <laughs> Invasion, Genocide, Enslavement, Death Star, Vogan genocide. Construction Fleet, you name it. Vogan, <laughs> yeah. Of course, Vogan can let Construction yes. Fleet, only one choice. You've got to have a hitchhiking thumb to get to one, get on one of the right. ships. And then and ho- hopefully one that. of them bring you on board. You People know, get the, okay, the, the since you brought up Hitchhiker's Guide, let me just uh, start this one out by saying, as a generality, I think survival would be easier in an apocalypse if somehow you have an internet connection still. Good because point. you could look up any sort of survival techniques. Because mm. yeah, mm. there are going to be all these problems about, like, how do you use things? How do you, f- you find things and disrepair? How do you fix them? Oh, and on mm. YouTube, they've got... Tons of you know, all those uh, videos to show you how to do stuff. Like how tos would be wonderful for. That's the interesting too because you know the whole idea of the internet. One of the reasons was for for an apocalypse type thing, so everyone could still communicate. Mm-hmm. So we, that, that's kind but of. But that the, takes a lot of infrastructure. Yeah, to how? Maintain. Yeah, yeah, but how are you going to do it? Though, that? Well, the government's that, already right. hardening all of uh, their communications. They're gay. Which we'll talk about why. And the thing in, is, if you uh, know future. the end is coming, download a copy of Wikipedia beforehand. <laughs> yeah, save yeah. yeah. it on a thumb. Can you do that? And then make sure that That's you cool. have make sure that you have you know, buy a solar panel that you can recharge whatever portable device you have. Heck, you, you could download you have the your own library copy of Congress. Of the most important I, ca- of I kind of want to do all this now. We we should survival. Okay, okay. Well, let's you know what? Okay. Let's get to this so, in the end. So aliens. Yeah. So yeah, aliens. We're assuming they're taking us over and it's something so the negative. Hostile aliens. Hostile aliens. Like uh, Independence Day. It could be indep- or, like Independence Day, or it's any sort of thing. Will uh, they help the worlds. Or will they no no wipe us all out? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 definitely hostile. So, Gotta be hostile. So well, you, we can depend on our own, um, you know, diseases to take them out. Which yeah, is, yeah, uh, that crappy way. <laughs> yeah, they always out. seem to. Um, or, a, or a computer virus that's on a Macintosh. Or yeah. Morgan Freeman <laughs> could just be like, you see, the diseases <laughs> took them out. Except I'm not Daryl doing Morgan Freeman. Yeah, you don't sound like you had enough of a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> so I figure there's only three choices. The if the <laughs> if, if the aliens attack Morgan no if the aliens attack choice number one you hide and you just gotta stay hidden as much as you can right. uh, choice number two you fight and try to defeat the aliens like in uh, uh, Falling Skies yep, type thing Falling yeah. Skies yes. or number three you join the aliens and say hey I'm your man like Lex Luthor was doing with Superman 2 like hey I could be your connection oh, yeah, you know yeah. now and that's the, probably your most dangerous but the most lucrative yeah, or because Aquaman you could be one of their old yeah, yeah. well, what was that Aquaman reference Aquaman can take them all out with his sharks. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, so yeah, so we'll, yeah, I'm great. curious individually. What would you guys choose? Hide, fight, or join them? Dude, I would how strong they are. Wolverine. I would. I would hide. Mm-hmm. And then, if I found a band of people like in Falling State, like a community, <laughs> you call, you then would, it's up to the community. You just, you just start running. I'm not fight. fighting. I'm fighting. Yeah, I'm not on my own. It's like it's like <laughs> well, the Family Guy where he goes, "I think I can take the whole empire out on my own." Okay, go for it. Yeah, go for the thing it. is, when this is all fictionalized, it's one thing. But if somebody has sufficient enough technology to arrive at our planet and decide they want to decimate us, I think they have a pretty good shot of actually doing it. But then once again, it comes down to what we're talking about is the fact that we could survive. Yeah. So in uh, in that in that sense, but and that's that, we that, survive you would, you would want to hide probably because and Hides then the for, other thing is how do you hide? You know, like yeah, that's do difficult. you fool the predator by rolling? In the mud for a while. <laughs> yeah. so that kind of you thing. do it all the movie yeah. things you're putting mud on you. Get me, get me, get me now! <laughs> so, get think about, the log. Think about our our sorry ass technology and what we can do. Like yeah. our like if you went up against the US military as a culture, you would be so screwed. Because look at what they've got. They've got UAVs, they've got infrared, they've got night vision, they have weapons that can fire Don't even think farther, of it like that. more accurate than you. What? And this is our own technology. I know. Right? Now imagine our technology today invading like 100 years ago. <laughs> Like, right. invading the like past is the in same like thing. World War II. And what if these guys are a thousand years ahead of us? I mean, yeah, exactly. you, 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 no, a, man, a million. A million. I know. It's like, it's, it's crazy. If they just kind of go. The thing is, I would I'd no. probably just give up. Yeah. Like, seriously, if they were yeah. going to say, like, join us or Watch die, it's like, yep. I'm, I'm in. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want to probe me? Probe <laughs> me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> of course you like that. Yeah. I guess I guess the best thing would be to hide and kind of think about your options. I'm just checking to see if it's not stopped. Okay, it's not stopped. Okay. So I think hiding is probably the best thing and then see what your options are because yeah, I, I definitely would I would want to fight back and kill as many as I could in a gorilla I mean style. that'd be nice but you would just get your ass kicked no you so wouldn't bad. you pick them right. out you find their weaknesses and then you kill them you see that's you video kill game one. Logic there. see that's the thing is yeah. when you try but to kill them all you get, get that killed one. I'd be dead already yeah the thing you is we've kill been, one we've been once trained you by one. Our- oh!
Oh, and then you get right. scared out of your. Okay, next one is disease apocalypse. Uh, natural, <laughs> such as influenza, typhoid, bubonic plague, smallpox, Ebola, or man-made like anthrax, sarin gas, super virus. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the movie. Uh, was it Contagion? Was that the re- yep. one? Where they really talked to the uh, what are those guys? Uh, CDC. CDC, and they really said this is probably how it's going to happen. And yeah. as a movie, uh, the plot and everything, it's not great, but it really makes you feel like this could be very real. And watching it, you kind of go. I think, then the spoiler, have you guys seen it? No. Yes, I've seen it. Do you mind if I, I spoil? No, go ahead. Right, go ahead. Okay. Um, in it, one of the main characters, who's one of the CDC like people, like just suddenly gets the disease, and she just dies in, in a couple days. And it's like, it's so unexpected, because it's a main character, you don't think she's going to die, and she's helping other people, and then right. all of a sudden she realizes she's got it, and there's nothing she can do. And that's what it would be like. It's just like, you got the disease. What do you do? You're going to die. So what can right. you do? You know, duct tape and, what is it, cellophane on the walls? Not and it would be so plastic. strange to us now because the influenza of 1900 killed millions. It killed mm-hmm. more than the war. <laughs> I know. You know, incredible. than World War mm-hmm. One. It killed more people. And so we have never had that kind of thing happen. So if we, if it, we had a worldwide pandemic that really hit us well... We would be so surprised. Well, are you saying that we've anytime there's been a a, a disease like that, it's been localized? Well, I think Ebola is a good example. I think that that is so vicious. So what about like the Black Plague and things like that? I mean, we there have been times in history where certain uh, communities were you know dropped to half their numbers through a disease. Well, see, part of our problem, and this is a little off subject, but part of our problem is is that we keep we've kept our natural checks which are these plagues that kept our population down, we've gotten rid of them. So now our population is expanded beyond what it, it should have been in natural conditions. Yeah. And so now we have to figure a way to, I don't know, help the whole earth, you know, manage the earth ourselves because we're in that position. And, and with travel and how easy it is to get around the world, it's, it's much easier to spread. Than Which is kind of why some the, of those historical diseases didn't hit the entire world. Yeah, right. Yeah. But good as were, far as people could had walk or ride or... Yeah. I think one of the main things that we're going to have to deal with is the simple fact is the safest thing you can do is stay in your home and survive. Because if you don't have contact with the outside world... More than likely, unless it's very airborne and like you open your window, you get it type thing, yeah. you're going to be safe if you always are in your home. But that means you've got to be able to survive in your house, not only again having like supplies. Boy. Right. Yeah. Yes, but not yeah. only having supplies and things like that, but also being able to defend your home because people yeah. with the diseases or with, or don't, maybe they don't even have, no, they have diseases, might know you have food and try to get in. And while that's a problem under any circumstance, yeah. it's a super problem with, with a disease because if they come in and they don't cause you any harm, they just steal some stuff and leave. They might have left the disease, so you have to right. seal yourself away. But well, the and then, for that's that why you, seal good, yourself you need to download the, the right. Library of Congress sort of because Daniel Defoe wrote a really awesome book called *The Journal of the Plague Year*, and it details what happened during the uh, English plague. I think it was English, and it tells you what they did and what was effective. And mm-hmm. that by reading that, you can kind of understand what you need to do to. Kind of and keep that. From also, happening. it kind of depends, like how informed you are about it. Also, because um, if you're thinking about it, um, you may or may not know if it's communicable in different ways. If someone can be a carrier and not be showing symptoms and that kind of stuff. So, like even that someone who really looks healthy, us. yeah, you still might not be able to trust them unless you know exactly. You can't know. It's been where you want to live out in the mountains by yourself somewhere. You have like that. That's you're, actually you're probably a better in, call. Like, pan, yeah. You know, total isolation. Inland Empire. Desert area, and but then if everyone starts going into the foothills, it's going to well, be yeah, it, and that's and that that is a problem. The person with survival skills and the strong. people who are already used to doing that are going to be the ones around. The house. best thing so, is to oh, yeah. stay in your house, and like Paul, you were saying, you know, air will still come in, but most there's probably not going to be a contagion unless it's a like a gas attack. But then what if it's in the drinking water? For example? Uh, yeah, see, and that's. You gotta have your own water. You gotta have. (laughs) (laughs) I got a Brit. I'm good. (laughs) You're down to your last one. You're like, oh crap. No, no, the light flashed red. No, it's out. (laughs) I watch Survival Man. I just drink my pee. Oh yes, that's right, man. That's that's another thing that carries from uh, apocalypse to apocalypse is the whole idea of supplies. You know, Um, where do you get your water from? Where do you get your food? If you're gonna filter your water out of necessity, where do you get the filters? Don't come to my house. How do you make your own? If everyone runs out. What was the show know? we watched? That that survival that went for two seasons. They tried to get the people to survive, like after an apocalypse. The reality show. Oh, oh. 
We'll never know. It's called we'll Ding. Never. All right, check show notes. Uh, let's yeah. see. Natural apocalypse, superstorm, massive earthquake, super volcano, gigantic solar flare, worldwide famine, reversal of the Gulf Stream. Woo. We're talking 2012. We're talking the day after tomorrow and a whole bunch of other, for some reason, the day after dates. Too. Dates. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. Um, so, uh, well, I, I would have to say for massive earthquakes living here in California, I do not have the supplies needed in my garage no. for a massive earthquake. I'm I'm actually counting on Ralph's down the street when that goes yeah. happens. I'm raiding that place. You're just saying that so no one comes to your house. Yeah, don't come to my house. Well, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna make a map that shows where all the Walmart distributing centers are. Good call. Because those are where a lot of food is gonna be. Yeah, but bring yeah. firearms with you because you're gonna be fighting with everyone over. Of course. It. Yeah. Not at first though, hey, but that's we'll a good carry point. half our sword. No, wait, wait. Carol. Kale's okay. got a good point. They're not gonna go there first. No, they're not. Mo- yeah. Some people will, but most people are gonna so go to the you grocery go there stores. First right. and you stock up and go. Nice. Yeah, well, that's a really <laughs> good idea. Anyway, well, everyone else knows. Thanks, Kale. We're I'm sure now. Man, nobody listens to this podcast. <laughs> well, that's right. We're fine. <laughs> We're perfectly fine. Those two people in the bleachers are listening. They may tell somebody. <laughs> well, ma- massive earthquake. I, I, I and even storm if it's going to be localized like here in your house and stuff it it's really depends on our small community so like we're here in Temple City that is true San Gabriel whatever it's like we're only as strong as the people around us right here we right. can't really rely on the feds or the state and stuff to really come in it's all going to be yeah. localized first well one of the good things about living in this apartment complex we and I've, I've talked with the manager uh, Bob and uh, he he said well we've got this big pool of water and we definitely can use that so people have pools, you know, can mm-hmm. use well, water thing too for a is, while. You know, if this is a big enough natural disaster, then uh, fire, flood, whatever, or massive earthquakes, you could wind up with a big mass of people not having shelter anymore. Yeah. And then it, it's compounded if, you know, it was a bad storm or something right. that now you're exposed to the elements and you don't have anywhere to go. That wouldn't be quite cover. so bad here in California, but back east, that would be a yeah, big problem. Yeah, that would be huge. Yeah. <clears throat> we yeah. get an influx of a lot of people but going to the south. The one that I think will really screw us over bad is the super volcano like Yellowstone. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because not only will it devastate a huge area, but the particulate <clears throat> matter it's going to blast into the atmosphere is going to cause a... What they call it, like a nuclear winter. Yeah, it's almost the same as the uh, impact, the asteroid Right, right, exactly. The the particulate matter is going to take a while to... uh, And it might actually be worse than the asteroid because it's the gas would stay up there longer, I think. Hmm. And also because... uh, (laughs) I've been been in the public restaurants. This just made me laugh. Don't blame me. I've been in the public restrooms where the gas stays there for a while. (laughs) That is an apocalypse. Yeah. Of natural kind. <laughs> and there's, of course, the whole freezing thing, you know, like, you know, we can end up freezing or, or being super hot or rainy. Uh, what is yeah, it? Yeah, but freezing would just take out crops. Dude, we're we wouldn't be able pretty to grow. super hot right now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's freezing would be no swamp ass. ass. Oh, you what know? about a swamp ass apocalypse? <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, no. Everything just becomes swamp ass. Oh, oh, we're living it. it. Yeah, well, it's not as bad now. I've, we've gone through worse. Uh, what about... Uh, what was it, 2012, where the there was just no survival? The oceans just overtook everything? Not much you could do there, I guess. Well, it was because the, the crust broke, and so... I hate it when the crust breaks. Is it the Philippines? <laughs> the ocean, love. And, it's and, rising and, up. It's a brand You know, and they were assuming that there was enough water to, uh, you know, cover so much of the Earth, which, uh, scientifically, they've shown that it... It wouldn't be that bad. Oh, we're safe, thank God. It's just no, gonna be more we're not like... safe. It's just it wouldn't be that it bad. Just, yeah. Was that the prequel to Waterworld? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. 2012 was the prequel what to Waterworld. Well, when you first said it, it that made makes me think sense. of National Lampoon's Vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Wally World. Wally <laughs> World. I'm sorry, we're closed. <laughs> well, yeah, well, at least the... Uh, what reversal of the Gulf? Oh, that reversal of the Gulf Stream was uh, the one I keep seeing day after tomorrow. Yeah, day after tomorrow. The airplane flies backwards and all the executives are pissed off. But see, the thing is, is that 
vacuum. It wouldn't happen that fast, of course. No. But it's a reality. I like I like the idea of outrunning I you know like freezing temperatures. Yeah. And I love the idea. Of, let's burn all the books and it'll keep it warm in here. I like how he fell through the thing. Oh, he started now you're back on Hitler, up. are you? Yeah. <laughs> you want to burn books, huh? Yeah. I, remember I that. see how it is. When he burns all Fahrenheit the books and then Indiana Jones rams into him. <laughs> yeah, on the uh, how it should have ended. <laughs> Uh, Damn it. Just like that. Uh, Monster Apocalypse, Giant Monsters Release, The Kraken, Vampire Swarms, Zombies, Shamblers, and Zombies, Crab People, Crab well, vampire... People, Evil Dictatorship as well. Okay, what's with the Crab People? It's a South Park reference. Yeah. Oh, the, cra- okay. the Crab, crab people, people are underneath, uh, they're underneath the, and they've t- wanted to take over man, but they're not strong enough, okay. so they dressed up as uh, Queer Eye from the Straight Guy to try and make all the men become very uh, oh, feminine okay. so they could beat them. Yeah. Oh, okay. But it didn't work. It. Anyway, so... Uh, the first time. The first time. Mm-hmm. Who so, knows what the second time will bring. These, so, are, these are ones I think yeah, we can actually survive. the second time they brought Justin Bieber. Compared to the others. Like, giant monsters. Yeah, it, they're, they're definitely we, more we localized. We can battle them. I mean, yeah. with nuclear weapons, with... What's uh, the new movie? What was it? Godzilla? Pacific no, no. Rim. <laughs> uh, Pacific Rim, oh, yeah. I haven't Pacific seen it Rim? yet. Yeah, awesome. Is it? Big mechs kicking ass. That's, that's cool. Well, and that would probably be the only time if like there was a whole bunch of them that came. And Although it was kind of silly in the Pacific fact Rim that job. the Big Macs <laughs> got up there, punched them around, and then fired these missiles and killed them. And I was thinking, it was why the, the f***? Thanks for the spoiler. It's no. It's is the, at the end of the go and it's I'm Voltron. It's, 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 it's We all came up with the same thing. It's the freaking Voltron epidemic yeah. where it's like, let's fight for 10 minutes. Oh, then I'll get the blazing sword and cut him in half. Right. Why was it blazing? That'd be as stupid as he was. It wasn't blazing, but that'd be as stupid as Prince Adam waiting until things are really dire before he's. Oh, wait. That is what happened. (laughs) I think I should turn into He Man now. (laughs) By the power of. Wait, does anyone look at Okay, by the power of. Alright, so we're off. I'm not recognizing that at all. Snake Mountain! Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so monsters. Oh, also Evil Dictator. If there's an evil dictator, you would. I think it's like the alien. You either join, <laughs> hide, or fight. Monster, it's you're gonna have to really count on the military. I think. Well, with an well, evil, evil dictator, you can the also thing is, an evil dictator, he's too. always going right. to make that incredibly slow. Yeah, <laughs> that he's gonna walk away from. So you're always gonna be he's able to get find away. the self destruct button. <laughs> you know, every you got to carry that dental floss with you. Yeah, you know. So you can survive that. But no, I think I think monster-wise, you're looking at the military, and more than likely, we're probably yeah. going to be okay. And it's going to be pretty localized. Uh, the whole uh, shaky camera movie, uh, Cloverfield. Yeah. That that same thing. It was like New York. New York's going to be bombed or whatever, and it's going to suck for you know people in New York. But otherwise, it's uh, you know unless there's a whole bunch of them. But yeah, yeah. shoot for the head. And then and we you- just make Voltron, and he forms his <laughs> blazing sword, and wha-bam! Yeah. Wouldn't that be funny if every time you killed life. someone with a blazing sword, it went, oh, bam. You know, and the, <laughs> the zombies. Oh, bam. Um, oh, yeah, zombies. That's they're crazy. kind of, they sort of into the disease part, but not yeah. really, because they're monsters. There's they really are. Yeah. Because it's it's illogical how they survive, because if you had, don't have a circular system, how can you yeah. actually pump anything yeah. around to Whatever. supply power for we, your own? We arms? talked about, you know, religious uh, yeah we're not really talking about the possibility of zombies all of that would be i'm still waiting to see a very scientific view of how zombies could really well here's the thing you could wind up you could wind up with people who are just like in a deranged state like right like contagion like the movie contagion they're eating they're eating the faces of people yeah it could be crazy people so yeah at any rate how do you survive that well zombies again i think it's with your community or yeah you arm yourself And also, this relates to the disease thing too, because usually that's uh, shown that like if you're bitten, you become one too. That's how it spreads. So you stay at home. Hey, we have enough sword to, between yeah. Daryl and I. We have enough knives and swords to protect us all with weapons. Yeah, that's the, when, the key that's thing. When we actually like, have to use them. That's when we'll find out which ones are decorative and which ones. Yeah, are yeah. <laughs> it's like oh, that one. Broke. Don't touch that to collect them all. <laughs> if you hear someone go, damn it, then you know, yeah. it's like, ah. Well, no, and then what? the whole idea is that this is kind of up against the the stupid foe. So you don't have to worry about them having, like, guns or plans or things to figure out. You can just, like, wait till they get to you and just cut off Yeah, but head. you got to worry about swarms. Well, actually, we like, say just cut coming, their like, head, You have, like, 3,000 of them coming easy, down yeah. the street. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. And we're talking about shamblers here, not zombies. Right, right. if we go to zombies or no. swarms of vampires was the other thing. I mean, just groups of them. What are you going to do? Well, vampires, I, I don't... I mean, all the sexy people are going to live because they look like them, <laughs> and they'll join them. 
right? So then this is another one of those things where fiction All has poisoned our minds. Like we think like it's oh it's so easy to like kill someone. Yeah, I know you can't just chop off a head. Chop off I know. Well, yeah, whatever. You need and yeah, ammo. it's like you you hit something that's got the consistency of a body, whether it's you know a zombie or whatever. A few times with like a, a good knife, it's gonna get dull or broken or chipped. Yeah. You know, it's like you'll get to. Oh, oh, I need a katana. Man. Okay, It'll let's make that sound too. Uh, next is a uh, nuclear apocalypse, atomic weapons, the China syndrome, electromagnetic pulse, grid failure, uh, Stuxnet, cyber attack. Stuxnet yeah. is a uh, actual uh, Stuxnet. 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 <laughs> no, Stuxnet. Stuxnet. A, that's on a Stux. different net. Stuxnet. Yeah, Stuxnet. All right. What yeah. is it? Well, well, Stuxnet is actually a program that nobody knows exactly who developed it. Yeah, right. The Americans obviously did, and it it is it, something you upload to like it was somebody, somebody with as well funded as a world government. Yeah, but exactly. It didn't necessarily have to be a, the well. US. So what it looks do? like? What is it? <laughs> okay, ahead, it, was, it was this really <laughs> widespread Trojan. That basically was designed to. (laughs) Anyway, it wound up getting on like a lot of computers, millions and millions of computers around the internet. But it was designed specifically to destroy centrifuges in Iran to um, disrupt their Um, arms. Machines that (laughs) that upgraded the the. Uh, yeah. Reactor material. So basically, if it's sitting on your PC, it's going to find out. Do I have a controller that looks like the kind of controller that runs a central? Yeah, it was very sophisticated. It, well, it is very sophisticated. Did it, um, did it work? Yeah, it yeah. actually. It, it would make them spin out of control. It would tell the sensing equipment that everything is <coughs> running at proper speeds, and then and it would <coughs> hit a resonant frequency and explode. Damn! Yep. Then it actually worked. Yeah. yeah. And then nice. it was kind of discovered later on that it was like uh, all over the internet, like. You know, you but it doesn't do anything it unless, you have, unless you have a centrifuge. Unless you have a centrifuge. Oh, exactly. man. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's... Does little... Norton antivirus help that? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it doesn't that now. It probably does hey, now. Uh, hey, Mohammed, yeah. did you install the Norton antivirus? Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing that's uh, surprising about it is that it was... Sorry, hidden. I forgot to update. It was hidden and spread for so long before anyone noticed. Which was Can you weird. imagine if yeah. they called the tech guy? Yeah, yeah like, I have the centrifuge. <laughs> I, Leo, what are we going to do? I'm trying to make some... Muffins? <laughs> Talk to your friend Chong over there. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was trying to cheech Mary. <laughs> hey, what's going on? I don't know why I've got a nuclear weapon know. in Mexico. <laughs> well, we'll just eat some brownies. We'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, anyway, so the power grid shuts down. That kind of covers all of these, though. I mean, that's going to yeah. happen, and that's probably our biggest problem is that we cannot survive very well without electricity. Dude, look what happened when the wind blew our power out. I know. I know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just a day or two, it's... Well, some people were out for like eight days or yeah. something. Right? Yeah, you guys were out for how long? Five. How, Maybe like how, revolution. How did you survive? Because somebody actually had food and lighting and water, and we, God, we were fine. Who is this? I have no idea. Okay. So have you ever you- had like the water shut off in your house, and you have to like go somewhere and fill up a bucket to flush your toilet? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, All right. What? The one, I've had that happen. Yeah. There's yeah. one thing I I do want to get. These are the survival is, techniques. It's this that uh, later plastic on. bag that when the first thing you know that there's a disaster, you put it in your bathtub, you hook it up, and you fill it up. Yeah. And now you've got all that water in there, and it's in a sealed container nice. that is good potable water. And you wouldn't want to waste water. Oh wait, a plastic toilet, bag? Way, if it was well, it's edge. made. It's it's near, It's really strong. Oh, and it goes. Uh, and you mean it like covers your bathtub? It, it, you put it inside so your it bathtub, and then it big, fills right. up, and then your bathtub is full of water the gotcha, inside right. the bath. When you want huh. a comfy place to sleep, you just yeah, that's a water bed. <laughs> 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 but I know I think that's one of the issues, though. We definitely have to deal with is when power goes out. I think that we're very fragile as yeah. we are so. Exp- Which is why if you the, knew something was coming, get some solar panels or something. Yeah, you know, that does seem to be the way to go because a few wind turbines. Yeah, I keep something. telling Linda that I, that's what one of the things when we get a house that we're definitely getting solar panels. Yeah, and uh, we're going to store them in a Faraday that, cage. At minimum, you want to be able to run <laughs> so like that a compressor that to keep EMP things. Yeah. Holds, then <laughs> after it's over, we pull them out. You're good, <laughs> right? Yeah, I think I think we what we need to do is come up with incoherent warrior survivals or something like that where we have just a group where we just always are trying to survive. I'm eat my dog. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, no matter how much you offer, Poor I'm not Chip. eating your dog. All right? 
Uh, well, if we're hungry enough, you gotta do it. Well, right. I'm uh, I'm sorry. We'd have to fight Linda to eat the guinea pigs. Yeah. So. <laughs> what she wants them first. <laughs> Save one for me! Yeah. <laughs> I, I see this picture of a little like. That's great. Hey, Linda, like are you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> she was the first. I'll go over to the rail. She you ate the guinea pigs. pigs. Yeah, like, <laughs> What's the China syndrome? Like Temple City? <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. All right. <laughs> Oh uh, okay, next one. Machine, no, Machine <laughs> Apocalypse. Oh, hi, Machine Apocalypse. <laughs> robot Uprising. Oh, replicator. Stargate type. Nano Grey Goo. Self aware internet. Uh, what Grey can you goose. do? Again, we're Goo. screwed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Daryl just says it's like the aliens. There's nothing we can do. If 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 technology gets uh, gets wind of Sentient. being sent, <laughs> what passes wind? <laughs> if if the robots rise, I want I'm gonna act like that guy in Grandma's Boy and just be like, "Hello, I am a robot." <laughs> <laughs> just walk around pretend. Hello, fellow robot. How are you today? Just as an honest answer, I think like if one of those technologies went out of control, we would be very dependent on the people who engineered them in the first place to figure out the vulnerability and set things right again. Otherwise, yeah. we're, we're in a lot of trouble. Well, and I think that uh, that some of the, uh, what was it, uh, Terminator <laughs> 4, <laughs> where they, they showed the future, was that with uh, yeah. Christian Bale? Yeah, right? Salvation, right, right. which I thought was right, awesome. Right. And right. A lot of people and a lot of the stuff that they did in there, I you know, we're pretty durable as people. Uh, I, I agree. As I, people. I, we're saying think, we as... as a community, a whole, like a the country, yeah. not us four. Yeah, how are we going to survive? That's yeah. the point of this right here. We don't have automatic weapons <laughs> or C4. Speak for yourself. I mean, no, we don't. No. Wait, anybody know a John Connor? John I know Connor. a Connor. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, dude, oh, my God, Paul's son. He's going to save us He'll all. He'll save us all. I, I got a buttload of Nerf guns. <laughs> I know, yeah, me too. <laughs> Well, wouldn't I'm that always be awesome? curious. Connor, what Hot is the, the denomination of a buttload? How big is that? <laughs> what is a buttload? Is it I don't know. You want to check your bowl? I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Bring a bucket of water. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I, I'd probably go towards the uh, singularity type thing where it's like, just I'll join you. <laughs> Go ahead, I will. Uh, what's the board thing? I'll be the battery. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, that's Matrix, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Give, me, give me a Matrix world. I'm all good. That's good. Just call me Duracell. Yeah. Well, no, what was what's uh, the um, uh, simulation? A simulation, the yeah. Borg. Oh, the, yeah, the Borg. Borg. You know, Go ahead, uh, assimilate me. I'm good. I have to have a. I mean, like, being assimilated sounds like it might be fine and everything, but if it looks bad enough. I might be one of those people that would just fight even if there's no chance of winning just to go out in a blaze of glory. Because it's like, all right, things are screwed. I'm just going to, like, you know, try to take a few of them with me if I can. When it came, if it came down to, like, the, the last final minute, like, the, the Borg's walking in, I think we'd all fight them. Of course. Yeah. But I think the rule would I'd have push to be... Kale in front of me first. No, no, the rule would have so to be we'd have to do it... <laughs> We have to do our final blaze of glory. You're like, Kale, you're the, not afraid of those Borg. Go pick one up. Yeah. No, no, no. We hey. have to do the final moments. <laughs> I've got my sword. I, I'll, we I'll have to do the final Borg. moments, all you doing Arnold Schwarzenegger voices. Do <laughs> <laughs> yeah. die! No. We're going to get the job out! <laughs> I'm going to kill you guys. If you could get on, oh, die, stop me, oh, die. Yeah, yeah, Daryl is dying. Daryl is dying. What do we do? Oh, you need to the chopper. You got the chopper? Why did you say so? Why am I talking like this now? I mean, I don't know why I'm Asian now. I am back to the China syndrome. It'd be great to get all those robots together and have a big parade. <laughs> Dude, you were trying to cheat. Right there. Yeah. All right. Well, now, what about Grey Goo? You know, nano nanobots gone wild. Run fast. Get away from it. Stop. Oh, nanobots flashing us. Yeah. <laughs> nanobots gone wild. We give them nano beams. You think you've seen wild nanobots? Just watch this. <laughs> Grey Goo. Grey Goo. So the thing that's all that scientists. I, you got to just keep okay, it, get away from it. That thing would just jump. I mean, if if it really got out of control, it would expand so fast. It would be one of those things where it would be upon you by the time you 
really yeah, realize I don't think that there's you're, a, a you're way to turn stop into it. raw material. Once again, we'd be so. relying on the people that kind of created this stuff to come yeah. up with the solution. Yeah. So I think the key for us is to stay as far away from it as possible. And you, you got to hope that in all these situations, someone puts in a kill switch, like. It begins to go out of control, and they like flip a bit, and they all like start destroying themselves. Yeah, that's a great idea. A Maybe they should do that with dinosaurs. Yeah. You know, make them all female so that they can't breathe. Oh yeah, that would be good. Nature finds a way. <laughs> you know, speaking of nature finding a way, what would the apocalypse do to the dating scene? Maybe we should talk it's, about that later. Would, there would be a lot more sex. There would yeah, be so it, much more sex. Uh, yeah, that would be the excuse everyone would use. Like, well, you know, the population's really low. Oh, no, no, no. Oh! Oh, and the last man on the earth. All right, so now we're going to talk about the, what physical skills, what do we need to do to prepare for an actual one of these apocalypse. So. Well, I have my solution that I've actually been thinking about for a long time and that, that takes care of most all this, which is you go to a place and you dig down and make a cavern you close it over and you use geothermal power i said that earlier right well we didn't talk about it then because we're going to talk about it now <laughs> i said it we're not going to talk about it that's fine right. we're not fine and and so that provides your power and then you create a self-contained society underground that allows you to uh Keep the human race and then alive. You become the crab people. No, no, you've got to fight against them. I think you need to learn to shoot. Yeah, I can yeah. shoot. I think. I know you can shoot, well, but I mean, I ever feel that if you learn how to shoot, so you can handle a gun, how to reload quick. And well, see, fast we all will need all different kinds of skills. <laughs> Are you dizzy yet? <laughs> I think if we look at everything that we were, were going over, we came to a few themes about what you have to do. Is either you need to be able to stay at home, have a plan for staying at home and surviving until you, whatever happens, happens. Or you need a plan to get away. It's called a bug a out. Bug out yeah. yeah, bug out. So I think those <laughs> are like... Forever. That's right. Yeah, you got it. a castle somewhere. <laughs> I, I just think you would have to be in better physical shape mm -hmm. and, and top mental fitness yeah. mm -hmm. in order to have I'm the best screwed. chances to survive. Well, have any of you guys watched the show Jericho? No. no. I, I've intended I, I wanted I, to. That's yeah. an no, awesome show. And in Jericho, I think it showed kind of what would really happen. At first, it's chaos. Then the people would... Band together as a as a community, and then you would try to survive as a community using yeah. everybody's different uh, talents and abilities. You Far know, beyond those of mortal men, right? Like yeah. revolution. But you see, yeah. fostering uh, cooperation in that case is going to be difficult, though, because with limited <clears throat> resources, everyone's. If you happen to have resources, people are going to be fighting you for them, right? And if you don't have resources, you're going to be fighting to get them from someone else. Right. So it's it's going to be probably difficult to establish the rapport that gets people to cooperate because on the surface at first it looks kind of like, you know, look, I've got a stock of food and I can survive this thing and you have loved ones who can too and you want to bring in some third party yeah. and now you're running the risk of starving to death, all of you. Right. Well, that's so, the thing is, is that the first three months people are trying to survive on their own. Yeah. And then those people start to die, so they try to get with other people to, you're gonna run to out survive. Of by that point, During probably, that time, yeah. more people die as they try to find a way to survive. Yeah, so you, by the time you get to Kelly forming the communities, there's a lot less people there, and they're usually people that have skills that you right, need. Right, And you, know, you need to have a lot of trust. Yeah. And you build and that the thing trust. Is, you know, yeah. If you don't have skills, too, you might be just left on your own because you know there would be a certain number of outcasts where yeah. you know, the and that would be a really harsh reality of like, you know, we're all here. Everyone has a job to do. Everyone's valuable. And if you're seen as having no value and you're just like a parasite taken yeah. away from the community, you're not going to last very long. It, uh, what was that show again? The reality show? Do you remember the name? Where they put people in a survival situation? What, whatever it was. Um, it's it was one of the right. They it were, was excellent. There was two seasons of yeah, it. Yeah, and they were really getting on each other's nerves. It was hard for them to cooperate because they're 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 not eating. You know, yeah. they're losing weight. They're, they're, not, sleeping. they're not sleeping. Was it, it, it was alive. It was no, a, no, that wasn't it. No. God, I can't remember the name either. God, but it was we a, really liked it. It was too. really good. It was a, <laughs> it was a great example of what the might colony? happen. The colony. Yeah, the, colony. Yeah. Yeah. the colony. Yeah. Yeah. He says the colony. You're the guy, the guy who never said no. No, the I thought he said the calling. Oh, the and calling. I thought, no, that's not it. The calling. The colony, yes. The colony was it, yes. Yeah. And that was excellent. And you really saw how regular people would have to try and get you know work together and everything. And it showed how, hard. how it was important yeah. to have ingi hard. Uh, engineers. 
Yeah, engineers was very important. And then uh, yeah. again, if it's like one of those apocalypses where someone might be a carrier or something, then it's a matter of trust. And it makes me think of the movie The Thing, where um, oh, you don't know who the thing is. Yeah, exactly. In, yeah, like you know, the thing is like you might need to rely on someone's help, but then you don't know if they're just suddenly going to turn into something weird and devour you the next moment. So. Better run out. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Weird. Well, um, I I really think that. We're pretty much all screwed. That's why I think we should start Incoherent Warriors Survival Club because Kale might be okay, but the rest of us are key thing. We'll go to Kale's house first. <laughs> Kale, you'll be up. Right. Kale, 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 <laughs> Kale, and we'll hear. You normally call Kale, <laughs> right? and as I said before, out of I show. want you all to line right up <laughs> next to yeah. each other so yeah. I can get Kale with one shot. <laughs> there it is. All right, so let's go through each of these one at a time, and let's talk about the likelihood that any of these are actually going to happen. Is so this is during five minutes? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Likelihood. Yeah. Space right. apocalypse. So, like, asteroid or comet hitting the Earth is Definitely, actually pretty especially good. Especially recently that, that, with that asteroid that actually they didn't know and, and went to Russia. Well... Likely to happen, but we'll probably have time to prepare. I or yeah, yeah. or I mean, this is one of those things that, on um, a scale of Earth time, happens often, but in the scale in of a lifetime. human lifetime, it doesn't happen very often. So we we might right. be particularly. Yeah. But it has a, it has a logical uh, possibility. It's definitely right. possible. Yeah, yeah I think exactly. we all agree that yeah. it's definitely possible, yeah. and it's definitely something that that could be in any of our futures or right. our. And for as much as we track future, large future. bodies out there. There's a lot that we miss or, or we don't see. Yeah. Um, it would have to be sufficiently large to be seen, True. more than likely. But something you know, the size of, um, I, I'm not sure what the threshold is there, but I mean something that might be the size of like an ocean liner could come through and hit. Like, I don't. How big was the thing that came in Russia? We didn't see that one coming. No, it wasn't. Right? As, it, yeah, it but wasn't. It, wasn't as, it was like a car. It was like a car. Yeah. 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 But we could probably get substantially larger than a car and still miss it. Yeah. Well, and the, it, it could be enough to take out a, yeah, a city. Saying. You know. Yes. Yeah. And so if we have a cosmic ray burst, it won't matter because we're all dead. Yeah. A lot of those. No preparing. Something we can't see coming because the big freeze could happen because Seven Eleven could name their Slurpee that. <laughs> Got owned. No wait. Freeze. The wind freeze. Wait, no, Mr. Freeze. The yeah, accelerating like, oh, yeah. universe. Is stay cool. Stay right cool. Now, <laughs> stay right cool. now they're thinking maybe cool. we're actually going to have the. Big I don't know. Freeze. He had like five thousand lines. Yeah, in, I know. in billions saying. of years. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you guys? So we all agree that those are possible. What about religious spot? My wife's frigid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh snap! <laughs> what about re- that's a. Religious experience. Religious apocalypse. apocalypse. What religious do you guys apocalypse. Think? I, don't I think, think we so. all. I don't even need think no. we need to worry about. I don't that. think it's going to happen at all. And yeah. if a worldwide flood but, happens, but I don't think it's. Paul had a really religious. good point yeah. that a lot of people will identify as something that's explainable through natural means. The, that's something supernatural. The mist. Yeah, like a, like the locust. The whole thing on the over, mist. Yeah. If you watch that movie or read the novella, is that this one crazy lady who nobody in normal life would even listen to because she just spouts off stuff gets all religious. And things kind of, she gets lucky a couple times and they think it's God. So they all, now there's followers. She gets Didn't lucky that with God? In the stand oh, also. God. Oh, God. <laughs> there's oh, God. God. There's oh, God. Oh, God. There's precedent. But that, was, but that, that story involves <laughs> yeah, that, supernaturalness yeah. that's accepted as real. But yeah. Um, alien apocalypse. That's hard to say because, I mean, you got to first look at what, where you believe aliens are or how, or how, how they likely would be. it is that there's well, other intelligence. Well, it's like and then what they'd Carol end up, well, said. And then if you believe we'd be this, screwed, really. Yeah, and yeah. if you believe there's other intelligence, why would they come here? And why would they choose they to attack us? us? They need yeah. fuel. Like, uh, this is a, just I think we talked about jerks. this in a much earlier episode. It was kind of like... Um, we might look <laughs> like some peat moss growing on the side of a tree to yeah. whatever their advanced state is. So therefore, they could choose to either ignore us or maybe roll over us. Or you know, squeeze the water like, out of us know, into their mouth. Like if, if we're, <laughs> yeah. like if they view the earth as like a tree where they would really like to strip the bark off of it, they don't care about this moss growing on the surface. Right. right. Well, right. So we're in Logan just, construction. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So could- we're... We're like an ant hill that they take out. Otherwise, they would just pass over us and maybe not pay attention it or could, study us. It could be just like you know, like someone's jerk kid that just True. wants to could be vandalism, be a dick or something. Yeah, it's like hey, let's go mess with them. <laughs> uh, Global vandalism. I, what about disease apocalypse? <laughs> that's, that's a very, very realistic awesome. I think one. That's probably it's happen. obviously think... it's happened in the past, and they're just saying it's not a matter of if; it's a matter of when. But yeah. it, but it probably won't be devastating in the sense that the whole world's going to... No, because I, can, I, I think we are going to contain yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah because I think there, containment is a real... Yeah. 
probability and there. The, and every we've, year we've it seems like about get even more like, proactive about it. Like uh, avian flu. Like it, it didn't necessarily mutate in the way that would have been the most destructive where it would have been communicable. Yeah, become from airborne. Birds, yeah. yeah, to to people. But it was like, um, that was almost like a test bed to see like how prepared we were. It made a lot of people in power realize that we weren't prepared enough, and now more yeah. steps are being taken. I remember I think the, there's a we used to have so many crows, and the, like when that avian food came around, there were no more crows. They were yeah. all dead. And it's just recently I've, no, I've noticed there's more crows again. Right now there's uh, something taking out a lot of bats in North America. Is it? Like bat population. Yeah, and what's Joker. taking out the freaking bees? <laughs> That's more important. Well, what about uh, yeah. what about natural Your disasters? That's going to happen, but one big enough to really fat affect bastard our, uh, <laughs> to affect. Hey, all right, everybody. We hope you enjoyed our brand new way of looking at things. This was uh, maybe well something we'll try again. We need a name for this kind. Of, I don't know what we'll call it. But uh, five minutes of glory. <laughs> five minutes of glory. <laughs> what was that's that game? What What's the game in the closet? <laughs> glory, glory hole. No, <laughs> when the true couple goes in the glory to party. I'm Joey Shamble. I'm your host. Thanks for joining us today. We only have a minute, Paul. <laughs> uh, oh, who's choosing next week? Crap, I forgot. I got. I got. I got. What are you doing? Uh, I want to do gaming. Okay, gaming. gaming. All right, okay. cool. All right. Okay, uh, sounds good. Let's not go into that. Who are you? I'm Paul. <laughs> I'm Kale. I'm Daryl. And you where can you find us? And you can always find all of us at it. I am rambling.com, which is where incoherent rambling podcast costly gosh leaves. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you everybody. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Woo! <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah! Daryl, you just made yeah. a music. You made a musical <laughs> fart! <laughs> musical fart! Damn, that was good, Daryl. You gotta Darryl. stop it now. <laughs> Thanks for listening. You can now stop screaming at the open air. Listeners should put their minds back in their upright positions and resume traditional thinking. Find us on imrambling.com for access to all of our weekly ramblings, show notes, general discussions, and any projects from Incoherent Ramblings. Like us on Facebook and rate us on iTunes. So long, and thanks for all the fish. Okay, now we're gonna do a live sound check this time. Oh, oh, I I I'm glad I didn't have that on my ears. I was halfway there. I was like, this was just about to go in my ears and I lost it. Oh, Holy crap. Wow. Sorry. That was um that was louder than expected. Uh oh. Did anybody have them on all the way? Yeah. Oh, you did. Well, mine, mine's already been turned down oh. a little, though. Yeah, okay. Dude, Sorry. not cool, Daryl. That was just bad time. Oh.